President Bola Ahmed Tinubu yesterday extolled the virtues of the first premier of the old western region, Chief Obafemi Awolowo, saying he was a victim of his ambition and as well a hostile opposition. Tinubu, who described Awolowo as a dependable ally of time and the nation's hero, noted that his principles had withstood the tests of time and geography, noting that it was only time that defines the tough decisions, character and sacrifices a leader has to take to make a difference. Speaking yesterday at the 2024 Obafemi Awolowo Prize for Leadership, or the 2023 Obafemi Awolowo Prize for Leadership in Lagos, the president who further described the late sage as a compass and guiding light for several generations of leaders, however, celebrated the president of African Development Bank, Dr. Akimumi Adeshino, for clinching the 2023 Obafemi Awolowo Prize for Leadership. Tinubu, who was represented by Vice President Kashim Shetima, observed that understanding Understanding Awolowo's teachings required coming to terms with, and I quote, the obscured reality of leadership, adding, overcoming the conspiracies of mischief makers, skeptics, and saboteurs, end of quote, is the very first test every true leader must undergo. The man in whose memory we gather here today serves as a compass for each of us and a guiding light for several generations of leaders. His principles have withstood the tests of time and geography. He stands as a testament to the resilience of conviction. If Obafemi Aolo's life also provides a compelling narrative for every student of leadership, an inspiration that continues to resonate across our community, our nation, and the global state. In his time, Aolo was fought both from within and outside his political party. He faced a hostile opposition and was pushed hard to the extent of finding himself behind bars, a victim of his ambition to make time. Even his harshest critics came to realize the futility of undermining him, put out, even in death because of his refusal to compromise his conviction. He fought until his very last days in defense of democracy in Nigeria, and these are the examples that make him a hero the nation. There is no doubt that time has been Chief Aolo's ally. Time has revealed the enduring impact of his ideas and actions. As we pay homage to his memory today, let us recognize that the same power of time to judge fairly connects with the lives and accomplishments of the honorees of this prize instituted in his immortal memory. Senator Kashim Shetima, Vice President, representing President Bola Ahmed Tinubu mm. at the Obafemi Awolo Prize for Leadership in honor this year honoring our very own Dr. Akimumi Adeshino. So what else can I say? Uh, a big congratulations to Dr. Akimumi Adeshino, a very stellar human being. And I say that with every great sense of conviction because of what he's achieved in the agricultural space and in the development space with African Development Bank and the kind of inroad for development in Africa, you know, he has made and he has achieved. If you go all over Africa, you can see the great works of Africa Development Bank and Chief, Adi uh, I mean, Dr. Adishino. And Dr. Adishino also did very well, had very stellar qualities when he was agri minister in this country. We know his work as regards the fertilizer revolution and those work will never be forgotten. But apart from that, as a researcher, as a thought leader, as a financier, he's done so much across the African continent and he's really worthy of the honor. And he gave a very spirited speech yesterday that pretty much laid a roadmap for what the African continent is. Part of the things he said there, he talked about the fact that Africa cannot continue to have slum. We must have decent housing for people, talked about the future of an investment bank for young people, talked about agricultural prospect, just like he was listening yesterday when I talked about the fact that it was a shame we took grains, wheat. Then he talked about wheat. He talked about the improved variety I've always talked about, which does not have any relationship with cancer anyway. These are heat resistant varieties that have been grown, have been shown to work. And we've seen countries like Ethiopia come out of the wheat trap because we forget that there's a wheat trap. Wheat is one of the third or fourth most, I mean, grains imported in this country that takes a lot of our forex away. And that has also been used to siphon a lot of forex. 
but we've gone back and forth as regards that. So, I mean, he talked about everything extensively, and the event was well attended by presidents, heads of, say, Yakubu Gowan and the likes. And for the man, you know, this celebration is truly of in honor of Bafemi Awolo. What else can I say? I mean, Vice President Kashim Shetim has said it all. I mean, Awolo was sword in the midst of opposition. The hostility he faced was a springboard, you know, to make him the leader he is today. He did a lot for the Western region. He ensured free education. He empowered a lot of people. Most of his works are still seen everywhere. But the hostility he faced internally and externally never pulled him down. I'm, I'm a huge admirer of the school of thought of the hours. You know, there used to be a popular song back in the days that my father would always sing, because my father was also a great house. And I remember growing up listening to a lot of messages by Awolo. That they will sing Emafote Bon to da Raja Bobu Wala Rea Wolo wo Emafote Bon to da Raja. That's to show you the kind of opposition I will over face. But in spite of the opposition, he thrived and he did what he had to do. When he ran for presidency, he didn't get it. He created the model he wanted to see across the Unity Party states. And those things are still being talked about. We still talk about Latif Jakonde and other governors under that. So this man. Is an exemplary character every leader in Africa must emulate. Okay, first, congratulations to the Obafemi Awolowo Foundation, which was established in 1992 uh, to sustain and uh, further, you know, uh, promote the ideals for which uh, Chief Obafemi Awolowo was known. And that event yesterday by uh, the Obafemi Awolowo Foundation, which is a biennial event. Uh, where you have a, a lecture on uh, the ideas of Awolowo and leadership issues and all the other issues that Chief Obafemi Awolowo represented, it was a very successful event. It was attended by both seven and uh, former uh, presidents and head of state and former vice president. About five or six governors were there, diplomats were there. There was uh, representation and uh, attendance and participation by, you know, leaders from across Africa, Tanzania, Ethiopia, uh, Comoros, the Republic of Comoros, you know, and everybody was there. It was a truly, uh, you know, a well put together uh, event. And, you know, at the hall yesterday, of course, the hall was f filled uh, to the very last seat. To even get a place to sit was uh, a, a problem. And uh, this will go, this year's event will go down perhaps as one of the, you know, uh, most successful of its time that the Awolowo Foundation has been uh, organizing uh, since it started the various series, the annual event, the dialogue series on issues of development politics to reflect the legacy of Chief Obafemi Awolowo, leader of the Yorubas. Uh, first uh, leader of government and uh, premier uh, of the Western region, uh, leader of the opposition at the federal level under the Balewa government, 1959 to 60, 63 or so. And then, of course, uh, the uh, man everybody knew as an avatar, as an icon, the first man to give Western region a television station, the first man to establish University in the Western region. The man that built uh, Kukuas, a lot of developmental strides, and I will represent uh, that vision, that commitment to leadership. And it is therefore not surprising that he was not just, you know, a, a political leader and statesman. He, he ended up with a philosophy, a philosophy known as Awoism. Until today, years after his uh, departure, you know, you still have those they call Awoists and a body of philosophy called Awoism that is taught you know, in departments across disciplines, political science, sociology. And it was this that President Tinubu was referring to in his uh, message yesterday, which was also the occasion of uh, Chief of Femi Awolowo's uh, birthday. He was born on March 6, 1909. And the point that uh, President Tinubu was making was that, look, when you are a leader, you will face opposition. I will always face opposition within his party and also from the opposition. But with time, 
this was the point, the key point that President Tinubu was making. Your, you know, the, the truth will come out. The verdict of history would uh, establish what really happened beyond the statements about the extinction uh, of Awolo, a man who had been described uh, once. I don't immediately remember the name of the man who wrote the book, but the book was titled Awo the Avatar. And there were many who considered him a living deity. So I'm not surprised that President Tinubu joined others to pay tribute uh, to the same Awo. Awo the sage. He was also known as Awo the sage. Awo the icon. Awo the avatar. Philosopher, statesman. And uh, if it would uh, make everyone happy, he started out as a journalist. And of course, the Nigerian Tribune continues to exist as part of that legacy that he left behind. Time will not be enough to talk about Awu's legacy, but it's important that the Awu Law Foundation is keeping that legacy alive. And persons have been honored on that platform. And the man that was honored yesterday, uh, Dr. Akinwumi Additional, was appropriately described by General Yakubu Gawan as one of the best that Nigeria has produced. He's not one of the best always only from Nigeria. He also represents, you know, the positive size, the best in Africa. And it was, you know, just appropriate that leaders from across Africa came to honor him. When Chief Eme Kanyanku spoke, Chief Eme Kanyanku is the chairman of the uh, committee for the selection. He pointed to the values, integrity, commitment, discipline that the panel will look at. And Dr. Akim Madishino was chosen unanimously, imagine as a fourth person uh, to win that prize. And the selection process is so rigorous that the Obafemi Awolowo Foundation makes it clear that if there is any year where they cannot find anybody that meets the criteria, then of course there will be no choice that year. And that's why I guess, you know, so far only four persons, you know, have been honored with the Awolowo uh, Leadership Prize. There was a lot, of course, that uh, uh, Dr. Akin Omi Additional said, but I think the key point so that I don't take more time summarizing his various submissions, is that he gave a message of hope about the future. The fact that Nigerians can stay here and excel. He, 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 he said Nigerians should not engage in migration that turns them into you know, liabilities abroad. When these assets, this demographic asset, that was the word that you used, can be turned into economic assets here. And he expressed the African Development Bank's commitment to continue to support African countries, and especially Nigeria, in the area of agriculture, and then the uh, bank, bank initiative that he says the, the African Development Bank is doing to come up with for young people. So on the whole, Dr. Additional came across as a Pan-Africanist, as a patriot, as a man truly of excellence that is deserving of the prize that he was given yesterday, one of many. This is a man who has been Forbes Man of the Year, a Person of the Year twice, 2017, 2019, and who has also won the World Food Prize in 2017 in recognition of his uh, excellence. Dr. Akimu Adeshino, OON, President of the African Development Bank. Congratulations. Indeed, congratulations, Dr. Akiumi, additional CON. One of the things I'll talk about is the fact that the institution of the uh, Obafemi Awolowo Prize for Leadership is a direct outcome of uh, Ju July 2011 um, dialogue hosted by the Obafemi Awolowo Foundation. And the theme for that dialogue was actually transformational leadership and good governance, lessons from the Awolowo example. Now, one of the highlights from that particular dialogue was the fact that it came up very strongly that there was a dearth of leadership on the African continent. And in in order to address this, one of the ways was to institute a prize that would recognize, reward, encourage, and also highlight excellent and exceptional leadership and celebrate leadership, especially in line with that of the of, of Chief Obafemi Awolowo, who was known not just on the African continent but around the world as an exceptional and exemplary um, leader. And some of his ideals, like Dr. Bati had mentioned earlier, are still being um, extolled today and still being used 
used as a reference point in leadership. And so came the announcement of leaders over the few years. The first started from right here home in Nigeria with uh, um, the Nobel laureate to Walesho Inka and then moved on to South Africa with Abu Mbeki and then back to Nigeria with Chief Afe Babalola and now again still remaining in Nigeria with Dr. Akumi Adishino. And yesterday gave an opportunity to draw parallels between the leadership style and achievements of Dr. Akumi Adishino and Chief Obafemi Awolowo. And this is quite important because oftentimes we talk about the fact that one of the biggest challenges that we have not just in Nigeria, but on the African continent as a whole, is the quality of leadership. The, the ideal and the idea of democracy, the way that leaders are, um, are, are held in high esteem, but unfortunately do not, um, do not make up in terms of that idea of, of being held in high esteem. So they extolled and remembered the virtues and the, and the legacy of the leadership of Chief Abuafemi Awolowo yesterday, whilst also highlighting some of the biggest achievements of Dr. Adishino. Some of the people that came there as a testament to the quality of leadership of Dr. Adishino were leaders from African countries, including the, um, the uh, um, country of Comoros, and also uh, messages, goodwill messages from different leaders across the world, including the former Secretary General of the United Nations, um, Ban Ki-moon, who had actually mentioned, and I quote, Dr. Adishino is forged in the same mode as Chief Abubafemi Abu Awolowo, a shining example of leadership. I think it's quite important for prizes like this to highlight good leadership, because oftentimes we, we emphasize and talk about our belabored by the unfortunate crisis of a death of leadership in on the African continent. So when we see shining examples, not only does it celebrate the achievements of the person who is being honored, but it also serves as an example, hopefully, to those coming behind that it is possible. We, can, we do have great minds on the African continent, and we do have great minds who are in leadership positions, who are making great differences, not just in their past, not just in the present, but also in terms of their future plans in, in, in their positions. It was also great to hear his former boss, Dr. Goodluck Jonathan, commend him, talking about how excellently he served um, during his tenure as uh, Minister of Agriculture. Um, Dr. Adeshino, in his own right, is an accomplished academic, accomplished professional, and also government official. At the time, he went to Obafemi Awolowo University, interestingly, um, where he studied agriculture, I think it was agriculture, and one of the things, economics, 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 agricultural economics. economics, and he was the first person in that faculty to get a first class in the history of the university. Beyond that, he got a master's and a PhD in the same field. So he has shown and demonstrated excellent leadership skills and critical thinking abilities from his time in university and perhaps even prior to his time taking office. So a shining example for leadership and leaders in Nigeria, in, in, in Nigeria and Africa. Finally, I'll say this. I mean, it was great to hear the president through the vice president extol his virtues and talk about and then also take the opportunity to remember very significantly the contributions of Chief Obafemi Awolowo. And then highlighting it, perhaps making some reference to his own um, decisions he's make, made in recent times that have been very unpopular, saying, saying effectively that time would tell that the decisions he's making today are for the benefit of the people, just in the same way, drawing comparisons with Chief Obafemi Awolowo. However, one thing I would say is that indeed, truly, time will tell. But I also hope you'll learn, um, pick up a lesson here in terms of picking the right people in terms of the right positions. We talk about this a lot of times. In terms of leadership, it's not just leadership with himself, but exemplary leadership in terms of the people that he appoints in places of, the, in key roles, so that we can truly move this nation forward um, and, and the continent of Africa forward. But congratulations once again, not just to Dr. Akim Adishino, but I do say congratulations to the, federal, um, to the President of the Federal Republic and of course to all Nigerians at large. Well, other news making the rounds at this hour. Power generation companies, Genkos, operating in Nigeria, recorded as much as 27.14 billion naira in monthly capacity payment losses and stranded generation of over 4,724 megawatts in January and February this year, data from the generation companies has shown. Nigerian Ports Authority, NPA, has disclosed that it recorded unprecedented revenue generation and remittances to the Consolidated Revenue Fund of the Federation last year, as its revenue grew from 361 billion naira in 2022 to 501 billion naira as of December 2023. On the foreign scene, former President Donald Trump is calling for debate with President Joe Biden hours after Nikki Haley suspended her presidential campaign. 
Haiti gang leader has warned that there will be a civil war if Haiti's Prime Minister Ariel Henry does not step down. Well, those are the news making headlines in Nigeria, on the African continent and around the world.